Hi everyone, I'm Megan and welcome back to another lab video for Analytics and Decision Sciences 4293 Professional Analytics. In this lab, I will be investigating the graphical user interface, focusing on the command button, label, and text box. This is part one of two videos related to the graphical user interface, so I recommend you watch part two after this video to get a full understanding of the material. I based the material presented today off of VBA for Modelers, the fifth edition by Christian Albright and IV case 9B11E020 by Dennis Lee, which you can find on IV Publishing through the link provided below. Please open Excel and follow along as we get started. The graphical user interface tools allow us to make programs that have a customized look and feel. We can hide complex models inside GUI tools. In today's video, we are going to explore user forms and the different types of control objects we can have. User forms are the foundation of the graphical user interface. It's a blank sheet where we can place form control objects. So to create a user form, we navigate to the Visual Basics Editor and select Insert and then User Form. Once we have added the user form, we can see a Properties tab down here in the bottom left corner. So this can be used to change various attributes of the user form. To add a control object to the, to the user form, we can select any of the control objects from the pop-up toolbox, which if we go to View and Insert, we have our toolbox that should pop up. So for me, it popped up on the other screen, so let me just drag it over. There we go. So, if we wanted to call a user form in a macro, we write the name of the user form, which in this case is user form 1, and then we write dot show. So, the first control object we're going to talk about is the command button. So, for us to add this, we have to get back to our toolbox. So, we can find our command button, which is here, and then we just drag it into our user form. So if we look down at our properties window, we can see that the name is command button 1, and then we also have a caption, which is pretty important, and that's the text that is within our command button. So we are going to change our caption to close, and now you can see up here that what once said command button 1 now says close. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a simple line of code that allows us to close the user form. So to code this button, we're going to right click and then we're going to go to view code. So this is going to bring us to a code window that already has our beginning line of the sub and our end line of the sub. So since the name of the button is command button one, that's what we have here in the first part of the name of the sub. And then we have underscore click, which is the action that, or the event that is going to run to force this macro to run. So for us to close the user form, we're gonna write unload user form one, which is the name of this user form. So now we can run this, and as you can see, we get our user form pop up, and if we hit the close button, it closes our user form. So up in the top right of our code, so if we go back to that, we can see that we have the procedure here, which is click. So if we drop this down, it's going to give us a number of events that we can choose to enable this code to run. So 
we could have click, double click, um, key up, key down, a bunch of other things to force this macro to run rather than just clicking it with our mouse. So now that we've talked about command buttons, we're going to go back to our user form and we are going to add a label. So a label is used to display text in a user form and we can change the title and the caption in the properties tab on the left just like we did with our command button. So to add a label, we have to go back to our toolbox and we can select label and drag it into our user form wherever we want to put it. So just like with the command button we can assign code to this. I typically leave it without code and just insert text myself um, but if you if you need to add code you can definitely do that. So we can use this label within other macros by writing label1.properties. So if label1 is going to be the name of this label, which we can change that to be anything that we want it to, to be. So let's call this label2, for example. So now our, our name has changed, but we're going to keep it as label1 just to just to make it the same for the code that I have written out. So for this example, we can change the caption of the label if we select a command button. So we added a label and we have our command button that is labeled close. So we're actually going to select our command button and change this to change or change the caption, sorry, to change text. So now what we're going to do is when we select our change text command button, we are going to make the text say hello. Um, we're going to make that appear and disappear. So I'm going to move the location of the label to the middle and I'm going to right click on our command button to view our code. So we're going to change our unload user form 1, which if you recall was just closing the user form. We are going to change that to an if statement. So we're going to have if label1.caption, because that is our property that we want to um, change, if that does not have any text, then we're going to change label one dot caption to be equal to hello and if for any other case we are going to change label one dot caption equal to a blank and then we are going to end our if statement so if we run this, it's going to bring us to our user form. And if we hit change text, we can see that label one disappears. So if we select change text again, we can see hello appears and then it's going to disappear and then hello comes back up. So that's just going to keep running until we hit the exit button up here at the top of the user form. So the next thing we're going to talk about is a text box. So a text box allows us to enter text within our user form. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an example where we have a text bo box as well as a command button. And we're going to use a message box to show what text was written inside of our text box when we hit the command button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete our label and then using our toolbox I'm going to add a text box by dragging that into our user form. So the name of this text box is textbox1 
And as you can see, there is no caption in this uh, case because the user, when this pop, the user form pops up, is going to write the text themselves. So we're going to change the caption of our command button to be show text. And then we are going to right click and view our code to change it from the previous example. So we're going to change this to a message box that is going to give us the text box 1, which is the name of our text box, uh, the value that we write within that. So if we run this, we get our user form with a text box and then our show text. So if we write, uh, I don't know, let's write watermelon in our text box and then we hit show text, we can see that we get a message box here with the word watermelon. And then we can change this to be ABC and we get a, a message box with the, um, the letters ABC. So to close this, we have to hit the X at the top here again because our command button no longer unloads the user box or the user form, sorry. I hope the material presented on the graphical user interface is useful when using VBA for decision modeling. Please check out part two of this video where I investigate option buttons and combo boxes. If you liked this video, please leave a like, comment, as well as subscribe to our channel. We have more content related to VBA for decision modeling in our playlist, so if you're interested in more videos, check it out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!